Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, this afternoon, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Ram and Dr. Uh, Dominic Hodge, who have set up an amazing point of care ultrasound training program at Wessex Deanery. And today they're going to take us through how they've set it all up. And also we'll hear from uh, Dr. Ben Ricketts and Dr. Tintin Th uh, Kang, who were the first trainees to cre get credentials in point of care ultrasound. So uh, if you have any questions, we will be doing a Q&A sessions later on and hope you uh, enjoy the, the webinar. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Super, thank you for coming. Um... Yeah, we've, um, I'm Dr. Ram now, I've been asked with Dom and Ben and Vinton to talk about what we're doing in Wessex and how we've set up a training program to get all our acute medics through their famous training, which is now part of their mandatory training requirements. Um, what we'll start off with is just talking a little bit about uh, introduction to general pokers training some of the barriers that have traditionally um, hampered people getting fully accredited after starting training. Then we'll talk about how it all started in Wessex with Dom's um, Wessex Ultrasound Fellowship, and then going on to talk about our strategic plan for POCUS training, going through the handheld butterfly devices, which is um, the, the project that you are here really to hear about, and then talking to Finfin and Ben about how it's worked in practice and how they've managed to go through the training program to get accredited in pretty speedy time. Um, opportunity at the end to ask, um, ask us some questions on the, on the chat and um, we'll do our best to answer them in, as soon as we're done. Um, point of care ultrasound is now a recognized as a essential clinical tool and there's different types of training pathways that you can accredit in and get fully trained in um they all follow a very similar manner of training where you start off with a blended learning from a course of online training um face to face teaching um with mental practice to ensure that you're train you're scanning correctly then completing a logbook of scans with a certain amount of pathology and some normal scans too, but with a final trig triggered assessment at the end to make, to make sure that you're at the required standard to, to do scanning in, in, in clinical practice and make clinical decisions using your point of care ultrasound skills. Um, traditionally, having that, um, that, that triad of having the patient next to the trainee with the trainer to do um, the mental practice and the triggered assessments have been really difficult and it's been one of the barriers that um, that has hampered people in the past getting accredited. Um, we know that many people attend courses, but very few of them go on to achieve accreditation. Dom and I have both been through the, 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 the training programs for different types of um, POCUS um, accreditations and We've, we've kind of um, identified some of the barriers that we've encountered. Um, these are the availability of trained mentors. Um, those mentors have been time allocated to them, whether it's financial um, time allocated to train people and, and being paid for their expertise. Also um, for trainees to have time away from their clinical um, workloads to be able to, to, to learn ultrasound is, is something that has hampered many in the past. Um, after attending a course, being able to, to get trained um, because the time is just not there with the probes. The availability of the probes um, is, is really important as well. Um, I remember being um, one out part of the deanery, traveling by train and trying to, to get to a, another part of the deanery to, to see my mentor and then being told that there was no probes available. It's quite disheartening and one of the barriers that I encountered um, concerns about the general data protection requirements has been something that has been tradition, um, something that has been a barrier in the past and I think has been overcome and also the availability of courses. Um, sometimes they're overbooked, sometimes there's a long waiting list and that is one of the barriers that we've um, had. I'm going to let Dom talk about the, the, the fellowship which he started um, and has been the, the starting, the, the building block on what AI, the acute medics have built on. So I'm going to let Dom talk about the, the Wessex Ultrasound Fellowship. 
Thanks, Ram. So, um, like many trainees with an interest in point of care ultrasound, uh, after completing my online learning in the course, I struggled to get all the mentored scans I, I needed for, and I started with thoracic ultrasound. Um, eventually, I got there, but it was a it was a struggle. And um, I had the opportunity to pre present to the Ministry of Defence and Innovation Committee um, for some funding. And um, on the back of that project, we set up a um, a course and uh, and funding using butterflies, in fact, uh, to train um, to train uh, military doctors uh, in point of care ultrasound. That led on to the project that I've established in Wessex. And I spoke to um, Dr. Matthew Williams, who's an intensive care consultant and the regional um, simulation lead, and he was very encouraging. And so I applied for funding for uh, four butterfly probes that we, we, we loaned to uh, registrars across specialties in respiratory intensive care medicine and acute medicine. And the idea was that they kept the probes and they were able to, um, to use them day to day and scan, upload scans to the cloud so that a mentor or supervisor could. Um, could sign that off and that was that was a highly successful project um the reason that we chose butterfly at the time it was the only device that, that allowed remote access and it had a uh, has a live telementoring capability that we thought would be used more more than it has been actually um but it's got lots of great technology uh, and in terms of um cost you know it's 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 a device that allows you to scan the whole body uh, 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 quite a reasonable cost essentially uh, and the fact that it's small meant that people could take it away with them um, keep it safe and use it where, wherever they were and it, it, it meant that we could dislocate trainer um, from the equation and people could be remote so um, and, it, and it's worked very very well for that so we've, we've been very pleased. In July last year FAMAS became mandatory for all those on the new AIM curriculum curriculum and there was a, a real concern from our trainees on the new curriculum of how they were going to achieve this it, it took our me three years to get accredited in famous and and one of my colleagues five years and there was real concern about if they had to get that famous accreditation as well as a, another um specialist skill within their four years of training it was going to be a real struggle um there was concerns about getting onto a famous course having the access to the, the, the ultrasound machines as not many, not all the centers in, in Wessex have had um, ultrasound uh, um, machines available and also having um, trainer time to, to be able to, to train them up. So we, we listened to their concerns and, and we were aware of the barriers of training um, that, that um, had been there when Dom and I had, had have tried to get accredited in our respective um, point of care ultrasound um, module um, training um, in the past. Um, we were aware of the difficulties that they were in Wessex as well with previous attempts to set up teaching sessions and, and, and train a burnout as well, which is something that's um, important to mention. So we felt there was a need for a strategic plan to, to ensure that trainer time and resources were best optimised to help those with an interest in point of care ultrasound and those who it was a mandatory part of their training to complete their training and to ensure that this training was sustainable um, to make sure that there wasn't that burnout that, we're, that we've seen in the past. Um, we were very lucky that we made the case for funding and many of the projects that we, we applied for were funded by what was then Health Education England, and we were lucky to receive a, a PA um, for, for the coordination of this project as well. The strategic plan coordinates seven streams. The first one is to run a, an accredited multi-specialist course. We were doing FAMAS courses and music art as well. Um, then Following that course, doing a supervised scanning day where patients with stable pathology will be available to be scanned by those who've attended a, an accredited course. Then having the trainees um, having access to a, a low cost um, pocket butterfly probes so that they at 
the point of care so they can complete their scans and complete their logbook. Log book. Um, in addition to this, we felt that having access to a body wet simulator was really important as well. We know that simulation is a really good adjunct to helping people with their probe handling skills and interpretation of scans. So that was something that was part of the strategic plan, as well as increasing the number of mentors, establishing a structure for governance and doing further research into the barriers to training. The principles of our project were to maximize efficiency um, with cross-specialty specialist collaboration. We wanted it to be innovative and lean, and we wanted to partner with industry um, to make use of this high, highly dynamic space. We wanted it to be education focused, and we wanted people's experts' time to be funded so that it minimized burnout. Regarding the strategic plan, the first part was to have these courses. And we have initially run a famous course and a Fusic Heart course, and we plan to run those twice a year. Um, and I think that's enough to, to, to ensure that our trainees get training, but not too much that we have burnout of the faculty. Um, those who require FAMIS as a, as, a, as a mandatory part of their training, they will get priority to go on those courses, but anyone with an interest in point of care ultra, ultrasound is welcome to, to attend um, so long as that they, there are places available. Following the courses, we wanted to, to run these supervised scanning days uh, where we can scan patients with pathologies under the supervision of mentors so that candidates can get their mental scans done in a timely fashion and go away from the course knowing that their scanning skills are strong, strong enough to be able to scan um, with the butterfly probes. The probes themselves, um, all Wessex trainees on the new curriculum will have access to a, a butterfly probe. And we are hoped that, and the target we've set is that by July 2024, that everyone will be on the new curriculum on that batch will be, um, will be accredited. Regarding simulation, we have a bodywork simulator. And we know that it's really helpful in developing probe handling skills and um, diagnostic skill interpretation as well. Um, it's been shown to, to shorten the time to accreditation. And we know that it's something that is a safe environment. So anyone who maybe have gone on the course a few years ago and is coming back into wanting to scan, it can be a good stepping stone for them to be able to scan in a safe environment and build up their confidence to be able to, to scan again in, in real, on real patients and go through the accreditation process. In terms of coordinating regional resources, we know that there's a very small pool of people who are trained and are able to have that time to, to, to put into the pot of, of training up the next generation of, of trainees. And we, are trying to make sure that we know where they are, if they're willing to, to participate in training people and making them a little bit more visible so that our trainees are able to move trusts, knowing that there's people in different trusts able to support their learning. Governance and education is so important. Um, we're coordinating with local leads and um, working on governance at the moment in, in the trust I work in, um, just to make sure that we ensure that we are participating in local audit and learning to make sure that scans are reviewed and are correct. So that's something that we're very keen to, to continue and develop. Um, in Southampton, we have Lucas, who was our ultrasound Wessex fellow, who set up these monthly teaching sessions and they were very successful um, going online and having people from across the, the deanery attend talking about interesting cases and just making sure that that POCUS community was not feeling as isolated and having some good teaching on a regular basis. 
as well as that, we're doing some work with universities, working with a, an accredited um, questionnaire to ensure that we highlight barriers to accreditation and try to identify those and address those barriers to help further generations complete their training in a timely manner and and that's really important it took me a long time to get trained and i think if we can help the generation the current generation with their training it just means that they can go on and do other things and develop using ultrasound in their clinical practice a lot quicker um and and just advance in their their practice and, and making sure that they're not um hampered with the amount of time and the barriers that we had to encounter when we were trying to get accredited. In terms of the handheld probes, our trainees are issued with a, a probe for at least six months in the first instance. Um, they have an opportunity to use those in the workplace and do further mentored scans if there's a mentor in, in, in their workplace or even scan independently after they've done their mentored scans. It's, um, we've linked them with, with mentors and um, supervisors across the deanery and we're starting to increase that number um, after the, the first wave of training. Trainers, the trainees that we have, they're expected to work through the, the FAMAS curriculum and, and, and get their, their, the required number of fluid effusions, ascites, hydronephroses to complete their logbook and the, the butterfly probes are able to help them do that by having a, a probe at the point of care, which is, which is really important. Regarding the administration of the probes, they're held at the Wessex, um, at the, at the Queen Alexander Simulations Department and they're the proper, they remain the property of the Wessex Deanery. Given the portability of the probes, we've asked our trainees to sign a disclaimer to ensure that they they understand the responsibility of having that probe. Um, we provide them with a robust case as well, and we've just secured funding that um, HE England will um, fund us for insurance for all of those probes if they go missing. The butterfly team um, have a three-year warranty um, for the probes for damage as well, and they're pretty robust. My one of my colleagues um, unfortunately had a car accident where he crashed his car at 70 miles per hour. He flipped it over 17 times. He's fine. And so is his butterfly probe. So they are very, very robust bits of kit. And um, and that's that's something that's one, one of the, you know, with, with the, the crystal probes, they, they can be dropped and they can be damaged. But the, the butterfly probes are, are very robust. In terms of sharing scans, um, we know that there's um, that we want to make sure that that um, all data, um, all all patient data is 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 de-identified from the shared scans. We we want to avoid any issues with general data protection requirements, and um, that's important so that 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 the patient scans can be shared in an anonymized way um, and they can be loaded up to the Wessex cloud. Trainees can keep a, a logbook of the, those scans with a, a code that's only identifiable to them in the building that they work in um, so that if there is any issues in the future with a scan that's been reviewed and there's uh, something that they may have missed, it, that patient could be identified. But um, all scans are de-identified as um, per general data protection requirements. Um, we, we expect our trainees to use a mixture of using the probes, but also um, cart-based machines as well. And while there are different other types of ways of sharing scans, our first wave of, of, of the project, we haven't had to use any of them. We've managed to, to, to share scans using the Wessex Cloud, and it's been very successful in doing so. Um, Regarding the mentors, we know that um, while many of them are enthusiastic, uh, previous generations of people who've tried to train up um, 
trainees, they've suffered with lack of um, time, the administration burden and, 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 and lack of money for their expertise as well. So when we set up this project, um, we managed to secure a small honorary um, payment for their time just as a goodwill gesture. Um, I was delighted to, to see um, the Society of Acute Medicine two days ago um, issue their recommendation to, to ensure that that, um, that point of care ultrasound is really supported with some recommendations about having a, a designated machine and having PAs for the trainers so that 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 they don't suffer from the burnout that previous generations have suffered. And that, that's something that's really important to look after the, the people delivering the training um, regarding the probes. Um, the mentors have all got access to the apps and and are able to, and it's a, it's a, it's a very simple, well, it's not very simple, it's a very easy, very user-friendly way of sharing and signing off and reviewing data as uh, the scans as well. So that's that's something that's really important. Um, all the, the probes are compliant with general data protection requirements when, and it's all encrypted as well. They're very safe to use. Um, and it's one probe that can be set um, with different presets so you can use it to scan the heart you don't need another curved linear probe to scan the abdomen that same probe is is able to do all those different scans um just by changing the preset of the of the of the, of the butterfly probe um we encourage all our trainees just to just touch base with the the trust that they work in just to ensure that they're happy to to use the the, the probes in their place of work we haven't had any feedback to say that there's been any issues. We also ask them to follow good um, clinical, um, GMC, good clinical practice to seek consent from the patient. And if there are any issues, we know that the Butterfly team have a designated um, team who can assist with any government's governance issues from different trusts. Um, the figure that we have from January 2022 is that the Butterfly's um, probes were being used um, in 70 trusts throughout the UK. This is a probe next to one of uh, just a, 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 a smartphone, and this is and it's just connected by a lead. It's very easy to change the preset, so you can change it to do an echo or a lung ultrasound or a bladder scan or an abdominal scan just by clicking down at a uh, at a box on the on the left bottom there. Um, to change the gain, it's just swiping right and left um, horizontally and to change the depth it's going vertically up and down using the screen it's a very user-friendly interface to scan with we then get our once scans are done we can save them on the on the on the cloud and that's all de-identified and then that goes up to the cloud to be reviewed by the mentors to to, to give feedback on the quality of the scans and, and the pathology found. This is what the mentors would see. And we've got various scans here, all de-identified. And I could just click on those and review them and give feedback on the quality and the pathology seen. In terms of what we've achieved so far, um, we've got 10 people through their FAMAS training. We've got two people through their Fusic Lung and two through the British Thoracic Society Respiratory um, training modules as well, as well as two on Fusic Heart. As we've seen, we've got Finthin and Ben here who've gone through that first wave of becoming accredited and are now actively mentoring people in their trusts. And after they go on to teach on a uh, famous accredited course coming up, they will be, um, um, supported to become supervisors if they if they wish to. In terms of what we plan for the future, we're very keen to collaborate, and we we're trying to collaborate with the emergency medicine who are, do a, do a lot of um, point of care ultrasound in their curriculum. We're hoping to set up a website just to to assist people getting hold of us and trying to assist um, to to tell people what we're doing and and um, how we can hopefully work together with others so that we can move forward. Um, 
we're looking to further expand the, the handheld butterfly project um, to see how we can move it forward as well. And um, really keen to collaborate with others throughout the UK. And I think that's us done. Um, are there any questions? We do have some questions. One moment, just pulling them up. So first question is, what university um, are you working with on your research project? It would be great to collaborate. Oh, so it's um so we've got Emma Lane who's has a, a who's doing a PhD. She's one of our Echo senior scientists, and she's got a, a master's student in Manchester Metropolitan who's been working with her on uh, uh, on some research there. So we can we can put you in touch with with them and try and collaborate. Awesome. Next question is from the same person. What are the key learnings you could point out to help me support implementation into clinical practice? In particular, looking at NHS culture and reluctance slash fear to change. So yeah, that's that's a that's a good one. The NHS is a is obviously a very broad church, but and but it does have a culture across the country. Um, I think from my experience, um, I think engaging senior clinicians and clinical leaders is key. Um, I think if you get buy-in at a senior level. Um, then I think these things are much easier to achieve because they have that, that gravitas within the trust um, to, to move things forward. Um, I think if, if you have specific questions, Helen, and you want help, then we'd be more than happy to try and help you. Um, and if you wanted to email us, we can chat offline. Uh, but it certainly is achievable. Um, I've had a yeah, number of successes with senior clinicians seeing the device and going, well, what's that? How does it, oh, that's amazing. And how do we get one? And that's great. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Another question from Helen is, do you use a trolley for the screen? We feel there's a gap here when staff are learning and juggling the patient and the screen. I think that's, yeah, that's a very valid question. Um, yeah, you find yourself in all sorts of contorted positions trying to do ultrasound scans sometimes. Uh, personally, with the butterfly, I just use my phone. I don't use a screen. Um, when you're coming to do procedures, there are some adjuncts uh, that allow you to strap the phone to the screen, sorry, the, sc the screen to the, uh, the device. Um, I found that an uh, elastic band works quite well or the hands of someone who wants to learn for themselves. Um, so if you go along in pairs and you're teaching someone, often they can hold the screen for you um, and vice versa if you're teaching them. I'm a big fan of the iPad mini for my butterfly and I, I think that gives a nice footprint to be able to, to scan with. Quite, quite a helpful thing that I've done in the past actually is you can use your, um, your, your, your phone screen to um, share to a bigger screen. So you could have an iPad on a trolley especially if it's, you know, two Apple devices, they talk to each other very easily, don't they? And you can just share the screen to that. I've done that for presentations actually where I've scanned people live um, and that works well. Awesome. And Helen, I've written down your contact information to pass along. Thank you. Great. Any other questions in the chat? I'll also just take a look. Feel free to raise your hand as well if you'd like to speak out loud. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourselves. Um, and if there aren't any immediate questions, should we, should we ask Ben and Finn, Finn to give yeah. us their experience? That's a good idea. I don't know which what either of you wants to go first or uh, just give us um just sort of your experience of the of the project and how you found using the device. And I remember meeting both of you um uh, probably 18 months ago now and handing you a probe sort of a bit out of the blue, I suppose. Um so yeah, just just if you if you want to give us a quick um lowdown. Um yeah, so I'm I'm an acute medic. Um <clears throat> I started FAMUS before it was mandatory. Um, when I first started, I was, you know, trying to find machines around the hospital and push them around. And then, and then I 
I was lucky enough to get an email from Dom and um, and get a butterfly to which kind of accelerated my um, training and get me accredited you know within a year of starting. Um, and the, the the main benefits are obviously um, you can I, when I'm on call, I'll just carry it around and use it anywhere in the hospital rather than having to go and find a machine and bring it up the lift and push it to the end of the hospital to just to get my pleural effusion um number 10 signed off um so it's just it's, you know just massively accelerated my um famous training got me accredited really quickly um yeah brilliant thanks ben yeah, more or less the same for me too. Uh, I started my training before that uh, butterfly start, and that was lots of, there were lots of barriers like to meet supervisor to get the observed scans, and and uh, like uh, for the six months I started, but nothing happened. But when I met uh, about that uh, programs, and then when I get the probes, that helped me a lot because I can save all the images. I don't need to wait. Uh, to meet with the supervisor, just save it. And then after that, we can discuss that. And the good thing is after the, just starting, and I have to uh, like uh, rotate to the island. I was on my on my own on the island, even though I can save the image. And then when I came back, I can discuss with Ram and then uh, about the images and uh, uh, how is the quality. And on top of that, what I want to add is, uh, when we use the butterfly cloud, as we mentioned, we share uh, people in the same dress. We can see the images from the other people's work without the patient ID at all. And from that, I think uh, I uh, that's really helpful for me. I can see the other people's good work and you know good images. And, and also I can compare with my scan and then I got an idea, how can I do better? How can I get a better scans? As a, as a learning point. And also when I become a mentor, I don't need to like, uh, uh, I mean, so I don't need to meet every time with my trainees. And whenever they got a scan, they can save in the cloud and then uh, we can arrange a particular time to assess all the scan, which is a uh, really great. Thanks, Tintin. Awesome, we have a few more questions that I can pull up here. First one being, based upon the new recommendations launched this week from SAM with the increasing number of specialty training programs, including POGUS training, does the team believe that they could replicate their model and scale for all IMT trainees, for example? So I think is is that question whether we would train IMT trainees um, in in famous. I, I I imagine that's what you're what you mean. It's something that we've we've thought about exploring. I think certainly when we finish training acute medical trainees in famous, our plan is to expand that. Um, and there's a couple of trainees with the original probes who are IMTs or um, foundation fellows, foundation trainees. Um, who are working towards uh, famous accreditation with local supervisors. So yes, we do want to expand. Uh, I think our priority at the moment is to is to um, finish all the acute medical trainees, and then we might expand it out to the general internal medicine trainees. I think we put on the slide um, that our feeling is that you know we 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 will want to encourage anyone who's enthusiastic about POCUS like we are, but it does require some clinical maturity, and different doctors reach clinical maturity at different stages. So I think, um, you know, POCUS is a skill that needs to be applied um, by people who already know how to how to do their job initially. So, yeah. Thank you. A few more questions. Um, first, are the courses free? We've managed to get some funding for from Wessex to so for Wessex trainees, they are free. But um, for non-trainees, we do charge. Great, thank you. Are there any plans to offer any vascular access training in the Dearney just to build initial confidence with POCUS? So I think we, we're already doing it on the courses, uh, you know, in, in between um, sessions and things. 
so yeah absolutely and uh, the butterfly is is brilliant for vascular access yeah we do a a, a, a course for an introduction to POPUS course for the foundation doctors using the butterflies and um i know that lucas has a course for vascular access for everyone um in um that's open to everyone i can't remember the name of the course um, he has a, a one for Wessex medal, I think. Medal, yeah, yeah, which is a um. So there's there's lots of um, poker training going on in in Wessex um to to try and get people interested and and then properly trained as well. So we are trying to, our best to support as many as we can. Um, awesome. How much time does it involve being a mentor? That, I think that very much depends on the trainees, I think. Um, so, for instance, I work in respiratory medicine and, um, you know, lots of uh, the acute medical trainees will come to the respiratory ward and, you know, find me and we will go through scans live. Um, and I, I also get tagged in scans to, to mentor and, and, uh, and sign off potentially um from trainees and you know to review a scan in someone you know and have watched scan you know takes no more than five minutes and you can do it on the fly you know you can be sat anywhere and it comes to your the app on your phone or via an email and you just quickly log in have a look at it and uh, and away you go i think certainly if you're going to mentor someone then i think watching them scan um live a little bit as well is is very very helpful because it you know allows you to see you know to help there with their technique and things like that but ram, ram does more supervision than i do i think so yeah um i think um having the supervised scanning days and courses knowing that cohort of trainees that you have really does help because we you you see what's what their level is and if they if they are struggling, you you just offer them a little bit more support, so you get them to a stage when they're scanning well, and they're very good at being able to 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 upload scans that they feel as a they're, they're very good at self regulating basically. So a lot of trainees will know what a good scan is, um, and and would upload that for review. And when it's a uh, somebody with poor windows, they tend not to to ask for those ones to be reviewed, knowing that they would not think that that's a scan that they could make a diagnostic or clinical decision of. And, 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 and what you tend to get is, is a good set of trainees who scan well. I, I think we're very lucky at the moment that we've got a lot of positive energy from those being trained and the, the people training as well, which, which is, and, and, and with butterfly support as well, we've, we've had, a, we've been very lucky to, at this momentum um, to to achieve what we've achieved so far. Great. Uh, another question, what are the ongoing barriers to famous training? This sounds like it needs a lot of buy-in and someone dedicated to lead and oversee it all. Yeah, I think, I, you know, I think we've, we've alluded to many of the barriers in the presentation. I think having having someone in the in the in the region who has dedicated time in their diary and funded patient uh, you know activity, uh, programmed activity should I say, um, is is key. And I think um, my hope is that in the future um, different curriculums make this mandatory and we expand that model so that we um, we recognise that people people uh, to achieve this need funded time. And uh, you know, other, otherwise, we, we continue along this model of goodwill and, and goodwill when you're busy um, only goes so far, unfortunately. And it, you know, it's not a failing of the individual, it's the system, unfortunately. I think we need to make sure that we have enough trainees to, trainers to, to train the, those who are keen to be trained as well. So we always talk about this tipping point when we've got that critical mass of trained trainers who are proactive in their training, who want to, after getting accredited, want to be proactive trainers rather than just keep that piece of paper and say, oh, it's, it's a piece of paper that I've, 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 I've got. You want people who are really going to put into the pot and, and, and teach the next generation. That's something that's really important and getting enough of those people involved, um, getting them paid and having that time set aside 
previously we've had um, a lot of burnout from that one or two people who've been really keen to to set up things and then uh, the the admin has 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 been such a burden that that has stopped them doing the things that they like to do which is to train people and and most people who are enthusiastic about ultrasound just like using it scanning people to aid their clinical um decision making and i think it's important that we we encourage people to to be proactive in in scanning but also in training others as well and support those people as well thank you both another question do you have any thoughts on advanced nurse practitioners training in focus great you know i work in critical care as well and i work with many really fantastic accps i learn things from them every day you know what why not? It's great. Can't see that anyone would have any objection to it. It just comes back to the clinical maturity thing, doesn't it? And and using it appropriately would do. Big thumbs up for me. We've got a few advanced nurse practitioners in Portsmouth who are, and, and um, allied professionals who are POCUS accredited and some are on their way to be in that POCUS um, to, to do POCUS accreditation. Big, big, um, yeah, absolutely really keen for those anyone who wants to get trained and is of that maturity to to be trained to get involved absolutely and, and in terms of getting mentors for, for those individuals you know if you're working along uh, you know a recognized curriculum um then it's the same way that anyone anyone gets a mentor and it's networking locally generally speaking to people around you whoever's interested in focus and um and and that will 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 widen it out You'll find someone. And then uh, one more question. I'm a GP working in Oxford. Is there a scope for GPs training in POCUS? Absolutely. I think um, Andy Walden um, runs um, courses for GPs, especially, and he's in Reading. He runs some amazing courses. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, every, every, Absolutely. I think there are lots of um, scenarios where you might get an ultrasound machine out in your GP practice, unilateral versus bilateral pleural effusions, completely different pathways. You know, is this patient in urinary retention post voiding? You know, those are just two things on the top of my head. And there are, there are loads of examples, I'm sure. So, yeah, definitely. And I, I think there's got, you know, point of care ultrasound is being used more and more in community heart failure services very successfully. Um, and I know that there are some advanced nurse practitioners doing that as well, aren't there, in, in the region? So, yeah, definitely. Awesome. That is all the Q&A I have within the chat. Amazing. All right. Thank you, Ali. Um, so I guess if no one else has got any more questions, we'll wrap it up there then. And uh, thank you all very much for logging in and uh, Ben and Thin Thin for talking. And I want to say thank you to Ram as well for organizing uh, a very comprehensive um, Wessex uh, point of care ultrasound um, strategy essentially. And we're training lots of people and we're very excited. Uh, we'd love to have you all along. So um, do get in touch with us. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Cheerio. Thank you. Bye-bye.